Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho! This is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about role-playing games! I am super excited because we have on a repeat guest. That's right. In, in the second season of the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, we actually have someone who wanted to come back. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you can hear her there. That is Emily Carapaz. How are you doing, Emily? I'm great, Dr. Tom. Thanks so much for having me back. Oh, well, you know, I, wh why why wouldn't I have you back? You're one of my favorite guests. I'm so excited to have you here. Hey, thank you. I'm so glad to be here with you. Dr. Tom, I just wanted to say that everything's looking really cool. It's a little different than the last time I was here. Oh, yeah. I got a new desk and, and I got some uh, Rogers' wife. Uh, she gave me some dice, some actual Aww. dice. I got a cool coat that I, I, I took up my lab coat. It's pretty, pretty swanky, huh? It's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for recognizing that. Um, I, I had to take the name tag off, but you know, the name's down there. So you can... Yeah. Well, you're doing great, Dr. Tom. I'm glad you're back for season two. You're on uh, because you have been deep in, uh, in the, in, after being an indie uh, developer of your own stuff, you decided to sell out and work for Evil <laughs> Hat. Is that right? <laughs> Wow, I, I haven't quite heard it that way. <laughs> I, guess, I guess that, you know, you're, you stop being indie when you have a Kickstarter that's like half a million dollars. So that, that's the rule. Oh, is that how it works? They, well, Eagle I'm in no it. danger of that, none whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but you're working for the man, just so you know. Oh, okay. Well, I'm doing freelancing work for Evil Hat. And I've been really enjoying it. I have done some freelance work for some other companies, so I hope you're not going to be mad at me, Dr. Tom. What? I, I don't care. I was just joking. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> but I've done work for Pelgrane Press, which was wonderful. And um, there's a lot of great gaming companies out there that are getting big, and I think that's exciting. So it's awesome. We're all working together. Absolutely. Rising tide lifts all boats. I once heard Mark Diaz Truman say that, and I thought, he, you know, it was pretty great that he came up with it. Then I did some research and found out he didn't. Oh. Yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. So anyway, I, enough, enough chitter-chatter. <laughs> we, we are going to talk about this, uh, this brand new game that's coming out soon called Bubble Gum Shoe. Is that right? That's right. Yep. Now, I don't wear shoes. But, but I've heard I've heard from mammals that bubble gum on your shoe is is not very pleasant. So it's very true. Yeah, it's, 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 that's what this game's about. Is about getting bubble gum on your shoe. That how is that a game? <laughs> well, that sounds like a really unpleasant game, doesn't it? But luckily, it's not about getting bubble gum on your shoe. It's 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 a sort of a clever pun we're going for. Oh, I, I I can rock some puns. All right, bring it. All right. Give us all the juicy fruit details. Okay. <laughs> it would make us feel extra special. <laughs> Honestly, I just wanted to find out. I just wanted to find out what all the hubba bubba was about. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I I hear that it, that the pre order is going to come up in like May or June. So any regular bazooka Joe can pick it up. Oh. It's true. And I don't want to burst your bubble, Dr. Tom. Oh! <laughs> but um, it, it is coming up then, and we're hoping that it'll be out in Origin by Origins, um, but it'll definitely be out by Gen Con, so everybody can get it. And I should tell you what it is. It's not just getting gum on your shoe. It's um, you're, you're probably familiar with the, the gum shoe game and, and system that Robin Loss uh, created, which has been used in scads of different games. Um, um, and we um, actually, with the brilliance of Mr. Ken Height, um, uh, had the idea to adapt it for uh, stories of young detectives. You might think of Veronica Mars, um, you know, this, this great movie Brick with um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt in it. It's inspired by stories like that. Um, and so you take a gum shoe and they're younger. So the image of bubble gum and bubble gum shoe was just too irresistible. So that ended up being the title. Nice. I like it. I always like a little pun in in the title, so I approve. Good good work, Emily. Excellent. We have the Dr. Tom approval for title. Yes. <laughs> now, now I, I'm curious, though. Um, is it possible that this may eclipse other gumshoe games? And if so, how? Well, it might. I don't know. It's a little different from uh, several of the games. It, 
it has a different kind of focus. Um, and it might be a little bit lighter than some of the games. Although when we ended up writing it, we wanted to really capture the complexity of our lives and young people's lives. So we worked to reflect that in the world that uh, we have a, a sample crew of characters. We sort of refer to them as the Scoobies when we were working on it, although I don't think we put that in the book, but you know, it reminiscent of Buffy and her, her friends who helped her solve mysteries. Um, and they're an eclectic, diverse group of folks that um, live in sort of a real world where things go wrong and then they try and help their friends. So it, it is different. It's not no lightsabers and no, no guns. Um, if violence comes up, it's really serious in this game. Oh, interesting. I, I, I like that. Games that are taking a different angle. So you don't have a chapter and a half on combat. Is that what you're saying? We have a chapter and a half on social combat, um, but it's very brief about actual physical combat. Oh, now, now social combat. I understand that you, uh, pretty much you were the queen in, uh, in the relationships aspect. There's a whole lot given uh, from this book on relationships. Now, how did uh, a lot of your, your romance trilogy, how did that influence that work? Or, or can you talk to us a little bit about the, the relationship aspect of this game? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, I got tapped partly because um, a lot of the work that I've done in my independent days, which are not done, just to answer you there, Dr. Donald, Hooray! <laughs> Um, we have games that really work about the emotions and the interconnected nature of people's relationships. And um, so they wanted to have that be an important element of this game. Um, and so that was part of the reason why I was brought on. And I, then I got to work with Ken Height and Lisa Steele, who is an expert in mysteries. Um, and she's, a, she's an expert in the law in her professional life um, and has done work. Um, uh, created the the GURPS Mysteries supplement. So we had a really good team and um, and working on relationships. One of the things that was most important to me was to show how um, if we're working with teenagers as the main characters, it's exciting because they're young. They have a different viewpoint than adults might have. But also there are certain things that they might not be able to do on their own. So they're going to rely on their friends. They're going to rely on uh, mentors, parents, people in the community. So when we created mechanics around the relationships, I saw this as an opportunity for us to uh, use the people around them as both resources that they can bring in for skills that they might not have since they're teenagers, and also as a way to make this world, this cool world that either we created or that you create on your own, come to life. If you want to get into the club, but you know it's over 18 and you're under 18, um, and you want to sneak in just to see if you can, you know, bring a friend out who you think is in trouble. You're going to need to have a friend who can, you know, get you in. And so, the relationships that you have in the game, they can either help you enter into situations where you wouldn't be able to otherwise, or maybe they're your mom who's a cop who can help you figure out what this clue means that you don't wouldn't be able to otherwise. So we saw the relationships as a way to connect people um, and enrich our, our experience of the world. So you're not least lone heroes, you're actually younger, younger people who are trying to reach out to other people for help and to, to make a difference in the world. Cool, cool. I, I, I always like relationships, and I think it makes a lot of sense in that context. It's, it's not that I've ever been a teenager or a human, but <laughs> I, I can't not ask, do you have an update on the romance trilogy? Because I got so excited about it before, and, and so how's it coming along? It's coming really well. I'm uh, almost, almost done, actually, now. Um, I think the last time I saw you, I was just thinking about it all. I'd revised the core games, and now I've gotten editing done, and I've worked on, oh my gosh, like a couple dozen hacks and mods that are going to be part of the final volume. So I'm really excited about getting to share those with people uh, this summer. Oh, wow. This summer. That's cool. You think, so then, is it possible that it might be available by Origins? I'm thinking that it'll definitely be done by Gen Con, but probably the printing will happen in June and July. So not probably by Origins. Okay. By Gen Con. And I'll be at Gen Con, so I hope to see people there for both games, Bubble Gum Shoe and my Romance Trilogy. 
Sweet. It'll be all ECB at Gen Con. That's fantastic. You know, <laughs> I got to say, you handled that like a boss. Oh, uh, not, not that you even care. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, okay, all right. Well, Bubble Gumshoe sounds really exciting, and, and I'm excited also for the uh, the romance trilogy. Which, but I think now that it has become time for a serious question. Are you ready for a serious question, Emily? I am ready. Oh, fantastic! Now, here's what we're going to do because it's themed around Bubble Gumshoe. I'm going to hit you with like a lightning round of versus matches. Are you Are you ready for this? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, now you're going to find out that my writing team's uh, overall understanding of teen detectives is rather small. So this is going to be a lightning, lightning round. <laughs> All right. Veronica Mars versus Encyclopedia Brown. Who wins? Oh, Veronica. Oh, okay. Nancy Drew versus the Hardy Boys. Who wins? Hmm. Gosh, this is really hard because I really love Nancy Drew, but I had a big crush on the Hardy Boys series. Uh, I think Sean Cassidy was in that when I was a kid. So I'm going to go Nancy. Whoa. Okay. Okay. Now here we go. The the ultimate challenge, Veronica Martz versus Nancy Drew. <gasps> no. That's right. Oh. Nancy Drew, the hard hitting questions. Go for it, Emily. Oh, gosh, darn it. All right. All right, Nancy, I love you, but Veronica is just so awesome. I'm going to go Veronica Mars. Wow, there you have it, everybody. Veronica Mars, which is bubblegum shoes, just perfect for that. So that that's excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much again for coming back on, Emily. You too. Take care. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show. And we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.